In this video, we'll talk about what to do if you have a medical emergency and you suddenly remember that you're carrying a concealed handgun on your belt. Quick reminder, we have a gun giveaway going on right now and you can enter for free, but it ends pretty soon. Just click the link in the description below to reveal which brand new gun you could win. Hi, I'm Kevin Michalowski, Director of Content for the U.S. Concealed Carry Association. Now, if you're new to this channel, we help responsibly armed Americans just like you get educated, trained, and insured. So let's say it's Saturday and you have to run to the hardware store to pick up some parts to finish a project. You have your everyday carry firearm with you and you're looking at your shopping list and you enter the store. What you don't see is the slippery spot in the entryway from a four-year-old dropped her ice cream cone just minutes ago. And now in slow motion, both feet fly up in the air and you start a half gainer onto the concrete floor. The sound of the impact is impressive and you can't help but notice the startled looks of bystanders as they see your leg jutting out at a really odd angle. An x-ray is not needed to diagnose that you either dislocated something or broke your leg. Legs simply don't bend that direction. Either way, your injury is now the top priority for your day. The store manager is there apologizing repeatedly and he's called an ambulance for you and your home project is on hold. You can't walk, you can't drive, there's nothing you can do but wait in pain for the EMS. Then you remember, you have your concealed carry firearm on your hip, now what? It's all pretty simple. There are a couple of easy rules you should follow to help it all go smoothly. First, EMS is not going to take you into the hospital still carrying your firearm. Most hospitals don't allow firearms inside anyway. And I know some paramedics would appreciate it if you told them where you were carrying concealed when they got to the scene. In most communities, police will often respond to a medical or trauma-related 911 call along with the emergency medical services. If this is the case, the paramedics will ask the law enforcement officer to simply say hello and secure the concealed carry firearm for the patient. Let the police secure it. You are a law-abiding citizen and you have nothing to fear. They will most assuredly ask for your name and date of birth and check your background, and you should ask for a receipt. Don't give your gun away without knowing you can get it back. It's also really helpful for you later if you know which police department has taken your firearm. And another quick note, negligent discharges most commonly occur when moving a firearm into or out of a holster. So drawing the firearm from the holster in the back of a bouncing ambulance and handing it over to another person could be a very bad choice. Law-abiding citizens with legal firearms are not a problem for law enforcement. So consider this, you're injured and you need to go to the hospital. The ambulance doesn't want to take your firearm into hospital property because they can't. Some ambulances might have a lockbox to lock it up for you, but if cops arrive on the scene, those police officers will probably take your firearm and keep it safe. But understand, they're gonna run a quick check to make sure they know who you are, you don't have any warrants, the gun's not stolen, things like that, to make sure that your gun is safe. Make sure you know who is taking your gun, get a receipt if you can, make sure you know which department they're with, and get as much information as possible before you head off to the hospital. So, that's all well and good if you're conscious and coherent and you can ask questions and get information. So what if you're in a car crash with your firearm? The same basic rules apply. If you need to go to the hospital, don't leave the firearm in your car, assuming that it won't be found when the car is towed away. Taking the firearm out and trying to give it to another person on the scene can also go wildly out of control. Any bystanders are of course going to report to police that you gave a gun to some uninjured party who quickly stuffed it in a pocket and tried to walk away. If that friend does not have a concealed carry permit, things will not end up well with either of you and the police will be involved. So what happens if you get into an accident in another state? Well, hopefully for starters, you have a permit with reciprocity in that location. Sometimes, however, the databases don't communicate well and responding officer may not know that you are allowed to carry simply by running your name. This still shouldn't be a problem, though there may be more hassle upon retrieval. It might be harder to get your gun back when you're out of state. If you're unable to chat on scene, again, if you're unconscious or or they're hauling you away in an ambulance, the officer will need to confirm that you are allowed to carry in your state. So expect more checks as to who you are. They're gonna be running your driver's license information and looking for warrants and making sure that you are legally allowed to carry your gun. Now we've talked a little bit about what happens if you're unconscious. 
Understand you're not going to have anything to say. You won't be able to speak to anyone. And when the emergency medical personnel start doing their initial assessment, they're going to find your firearm and they're probably going to have a law enforcement officer secure it. In my experience, not a lot of EMTs know what to do when they find a gun at the scene, but I'm hoping that more of them will get trained and understand that. So your gun is probably going to be taken away from that scene and you're going to have to track it down to find it after you get healthy enough to ask those questions. If you are alert and awake and you have your firearm, make sure that you're telling everybody what's going on, that you have a gun. If they're going to take it before you go to the hospital, you want a receipt. And then the safest way to deal with this is to remove it, holster and all, okay? Take the gun off your belt in its holster. And if you have to cut your belt, the EMTs will have shears. They can cut that belt and make sure the firearm is moved off your person while it's still in the holster because that greatly reduces the chances of a negligent discharge. So if you're dealing with your firearm in a medical emergency, you need to make sure that you're asking all of the questions about where your gun is going and who is taking it. Remember, typically law-abiding citizens with legal firearms are no problem in a scene like this but you need to understand the laws of the jurisdictions where you are. Thanks for watching to the end of this video. And I remind you once again, we have a gun giveaway that's going on and it ends really soon. All you need to do is click on that link down below and reveal which brand new gun you could win. I'm Kevin Michalowski, Director of Content for the U.S. Concealed Carry Association. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to this channel comment on this video and share this video everywhere because YouTube is actively suppressing firearms videos and we need your help to defeat the algorithm and push gun videos out to more people. Stay safe and we'll see you in the next video.